Good morning, YouTubers. Ladies and gentlemen. Boys and girls from all over the world. The HMS Bounty. Beginning of the standing rigging. So I got a dead eye. Trapped in the vise there. And... <clears throat> We've uh, tied a knot and then cinched, cinched that knot and then put a little dab of super glue on the cinching while we had that counterweight putting pressure on it. And I've got to cinch a couple more knots up in here before we go to putting it on the ship so I'm just giving you an idea of what my plan here is of course we uh, we're going to use this larger uh, thread that comes in the ship for the shrouds this is uh, 0.8 millimeters which is pretty big and uh, we're going to feed it through from the dead eye up, you know, we're going to go up under here because when you look at this as an angle, all the dead eyes are back here behind the mast coming up. So we'll go up through. That opening I just cut in there. We're going to have seven of these big ropes. So I want to make enough room to get them through and then back down to the other side. So in our last video, we talked about how we're going to make all the dead eyes the same. So I've come up with this little jig here. And I used some measurements off the prints for the right distance between the dead eyes. And then pre-drilled some holes in this walnut with some uh, with a half millimeter drill bit. And then put some little teeny finishing nails in there that I filed down so they'll drive in the walnut without splitting the walnut and they'll fit the ends of them will fit on the dead eye you know we're going to protrude so we got two of these jigs made up so when we go to tie this on here we'll put the jig on one side like we have simulated here to start. We'll run the rope up over and put a counterweight on it on the other side. And then we'll go ahead and lace up the area between the dead eyes with the different color thread. And then we'll go to the other side and we'll find out what that distance is and we'll cinch a knot while the dead eye is free using this template to line up where the knot needs to get tight at on the dead eye and that knot I'm referring to we go around the dead eye and tie a knot with the big rope and once that's tied and we got a tail out here then we can take that piece that we know is the right length because we have this jig over there to tell us where the dead eye needs to stop at. Then we'll take that piece while it's still loose on that side and we'll cinch up the smaller rope on there which is this stuff here. And we'll probably use the, the little alligator clips and something to hold it for us while we do the cinching 
and we'll have to get that <clears throat> up off the deck where we're working in the area where the rope has got room to be worked on without being permanently installed. Once we get that cinching done on that dead eye on the other side then we can put our jig back on there and double check it and then do the lacing over there. The lacing I refer to is what's in between the dead eyes as we uh, install them. So they're using a light colored thread. We'll probably do the same thing. But the object is to get the lacing done and that'll hold the shroud permanently in place once that lacing's done and we pull all the slack out and tie it off. Which is a little tricky process too. So the first dead eye is cinched. I'm going to do another cinching on there before I put it on the ship. And we'll cut a piece of this rope that's long enough to go down to the other side with a bunch of slack. And then we'll uh, feed it through. Hook our dead eye to the jig. Put a counterweight on it. <clears throat> and uh, this is going to be an experiment the whole way through. Because once we take the jig off to start lacing it, we're going to have to have that dead eye being held in the same position as we do the cinch or the lacing. And that's going to be a little tricky in the fact we may have to trap that rope up here against the underside of where the goes through at in that hole so that it can't change position but it stays taut while we do the cinching or the lacing so that's the plan right now uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna try one to see how it's gonna go we're going to have a little fun here doing the trial and error to see if our jig is going to be helpful or not. But that's the idea behind the jig is to help make them all uniform across here before we uh, lace them up. So what else? Oh yeah, we got the second lantern glued up and that glue really held good I'm glad we picked that instead of super glue it's gonna be solid and then something else I gotta do is install this on the back of the ship those letters for the bounty they don't show it here but no oh yeah it's down there if it'll fit down there, I hope it will. But I was watching a documentary on the bounty a few days ago, and I noticed I think those words were up here. Of course, the <clears throat> the remake of the bounty that's in real life is out there right now has... Um, This is the same, but I noticed it had extra cannons because our our bounty only has two on each side, so there's four all together, not counting the little hand cannons. But so, and of course the real one's not doing a cutaway view, and we're doing a lot of stuff that isn't on the real one. So that's the plan right now. You can see there what those lanterns will look like when we get done. A pole to hold them up and then a brace. And I think that brace goes in two directions like a V shape. So that'll be fun. So in the meantime, I'm going to attempt to 
this first dead eye on and see how it goes and if it works okay then I'll prep another one and try to do some video of the install <clears throat> I usually don't try to video something that I'm doing the first time because I know that I'm going to run into something that's not going to work out and it's going to take too much time and that time is um, affecting the video length so I don't want to make them too much longer than an hour so let me try this first and then we'll get some video of the install of the second ones and lacing them up and that kind of stuff it's weird with this light on there you can see right you can see right where the light's at yep i'm gonna turn it off that's a camera light or a ring for the camera As you can see here, <clears throat> I got my second dead eye installed. I need to cut the top of that jig off on the next one. I'm going to go ahead and cut this tail though. Before I try to sense this. Normally I make the tail go up under the cinching. So I made a, I guess they call it a noose knot down there around that dead eye so I could pull, pull tight on it. Because you can't pull tight on a granny knot. Well, you can, but you can't pull when when I pull tight on it. I don't want it to it wants to roll around to the side or the bottom of the dead eye. And I don't want it to do that. I want it to stay up on the top as I tighten it up so this tension stays constant until I can get that knot pulled tight so the cinching I, I'm really doing it simple way I'm just let me make this go around the back instead need to make it tight while it dries yeah instead of tying another knot at the top of the cinching I'm just super gluing that tail And then after that glue dries, we'll cut it off. So you can see the other side over there, we've got the uh, jig on that dead eye and we got the two cinches 
and I made some measurements so I can duplicate this for the cinching to make them all the same. The 7 in the 8 millimeter, 22 overall. So when I go to put the second cinch on here, I'm going to make a, a knot at that space that needs to be in there and then just go up 7 millimeters. But I went on the internet and just looked and I found this is what I got to use, this noose knot. And I made some drawings because I want to come down, go around the dead eye, go back up behind that first run coming down, then go around the whole thing in the front and then choke it through the back of that one coming around the back and then pull it tight. So as I got pressure on this main line from the other side, I can tie this knot there's this one tail here that gets cinched and cut off later. We'll choke through that point. So the place where the rope stops and starts means it goes behind the rope in the front here. So I got to duplicate that knot because that's the only way I can get it to pull without. Tying, you know, the knot tightening in the wrong spot. So now that is dry. We can cut this off. And I use the grabber tweezers here while I'm doing that cinching so that the uh, rope doesn't try to roll too much. I don't want that rope to roll as I'm wrapping it with the cinching. So I got to measure and mark and do another cinch here and then we'll cut this off. So that's the first one. I think that's going to work. And then the next step is going to be lacing. Pull the jig out and lace it where it pulls tight and hopefully they'll all pull tight at the same height because I got this pretty snug when I did that noose knot. That's going to be the key. The noose knot helps me uh, bring this tension like I want to keep those dead eyes at the same height. So that is the first one halfway done. We got to do the lacing next so we got the first dead eyes and lanyard tied on on both sides but I don't like it number one I had to tie these cinches after the fact and that wasn't easy with the rope hanging there and trying to wrap it so I'm thinking when I get further down the line and I got two or three in the way it's going to be even harder because I'm going to be wrapping around Trying to keep that cinch looking neat. And the other ones are going to be in the way. So I got to come up with a different plan there. And the other thing I don't like, which is the biggest one, is <clears throat> get so excited and you get going on something you won't, don't want to stop thinking about it. I should have been using this white thread instead of the tan. The tan thread looks like 
it's hard to even see it there. So, <clears throat> much as I hate to, I think I'm going to start over on both of these and redo them in the white thread. I got super glue down below there where the first knot is tied. So I got to get all those out. Take the razor knife, I guess, and go underneath there and try to cut them out. And <clears throat> I want to redo it in white. And then I'll have to come up with a new way to do the cinching up here before I think I may set up my jig and try to do them away from the other ones after I get the, the main knot tied using this uh, noose knot and come down with a main line and around the dead eye go up around the back come across around the front and then bring it around behind the one coming up and then go to the tail that's going to be tied off with the cinch knots and when I pull this tight <clears throat> it pulls down on the whole thing so that's the best knot to use for tying these dead eyes to the main lanyard. And after that I can cinch it once I get this pulled tight to the right height using them jigs. And so jigs are working good. But this lacing got off on the wrong foot and I need to redo it in white. got some other white too I'm gonna to look before I do it in the white and make sure that picking the right one this is a it didn't come in the ship the stuff that comes in the ship is so you know it's cotton it almost looks silver <clears throat> So I want to try to stay with this stuff that's not so fuzzy because the fuzzier it is the harder it is to get through them holes and that's going to be a hard problem anyway. <clears throat> I do have a little trick. I haven't tried yet, but you can see this here. This is a uh, little piece of wire that's twisted to an open loop on the end. And you can buy these at a sewing supply store. You stick your rope through that loop and then poke this through the dead eye hole and Hopefully you can get everything through the hole after you pull it all the way through because it's going to be double rope on this end where the rope's going through there. There's going to be two of them as it comes through. So I actually do have two <clears throat> going through a hole at the bottom there because of the way I was tying them off so it wouldn't show the knot or anything. So we'll video that here in a minute, but we want to get that cleared away first.
Okay, so the plan here will work where the camera's in the way. Uh, just a little pre information. I've taken the tip of this white thread and put a little super glue on it and then wiped it off so it's fairly stiff on the end there. And then I fed it through from the back. It's actually this end. It's got the glue on it. I pulled it all the way through. This end is nothing. So what I'm going to do now is tie a knot on the bottom side of that. with this slack so this will be coming out the front and I almost got to do two knots go around it grab it and pull that tail through there I'm going to use this to pull it tight in the front and the back, pull pressure on it, pull it tight. And when we get done, we'll cut that tail off and put a little dab of super glue on the end of a stick on there so that won't come loose. So now we got this piece of thread that's about a foot long coming out of the bottom hole. One thing I didn't like was the way it crosses in the back. So that's a problem with we're going to have to deal with and get better at as we go along. We come out the front, we're going to go in the front. I like to do that so my knots are hidden in the back. And I got to choke up on this so it's just enough room to reach back here. Feed that through, grab it, and go in the top there, This is the hole that had that rope stuck in it really good. I finally got it out of there, but that tells me there's a little bit of super glue in that hole. But we got her through. come over to this side feed it through the last hole there and the pulley's tight you gotta just grab rope in the back somewhere and yank on it. Now I've got a mistake here. This one's going up to the back. So something's wrong with the way we threaded it. We don't want them from the front going to the back. When you come out the front, they got to go back in the front. So we got to figure out what we did there.
we went in the, the bottom hole there, we went in the front, we should have went in the back first. Of course that's where the glue's at, gave us a problem the first time coming through. We may have to take the drill bit. Let me get my little uh, I have one here but it's over there somewhere now. Let me get my bit. This is a 0.5 millimeter drill bit that you can put in the drum all. See if we can open that up a little bit, which we'll be doing a lot. These dead eyes are not very forgiving. I gotta get this cocked in the gun just the right spot. So I can feed it through. There we go. There, now all the ones. coming out of the front or going back in in the front. So that was the last hole on the dead eye. Another trick I did earlier was using them clamping tweezers sort of hold this thing I may want to just use a regular clamp I don't know if that's going to work or not That should work there. I want before I go back down here and do another choker knot on the bottom of this dead eye. I want to pull the little bits of slack out that's in here. And I think my clamp is inhibiting me from doing that, so I gotta get clamp on where I'm not touching the ropes and you just pull on one up and down just pick one and pull on it up and down while you got tension on this big one or the long one and that'll pull the slack out Now I want to do the choker knot. I'm going to go all the way around here. I want that to be in the back. I'm going to feed this through the loop before I pull it tight. Well, went through the wrong way. So I really need to have that on this side. 
so when I pull it tight I want to try to make that knot tighten in the back So I'm forcing it around there with the tip of these tweezers and then pulling it tight with the other hand. And then to finally secure it for good, go around one more time. If I can grab it, I need to use two pair of tweezers. Really yank on it hard so it's tight. This upholstery thread is not going to break. I mean, it's tough. So now, on my little scissors here, and the camera is right in the way for the angle I want to put my hand at. I want to try to cut that tail way back in there. And let me grab this other tail because it's so short with tweezers. And instead of the tweezers, let's use these pliers. I got the tweezers or the scissors on my finger wrong. There. Now, to make sure it never comes apart, I'm going to take the super glue, put a little dab on the end of this little stick, and I'm going to go back here in the back and get on those tails. That'll keep that from coming apart. <clears throat> so, that looks a lot better than the tan. So now we got to turn the ship around and do the other side. And after all that, we're still only halfway on one dead eye, or well, halfway on one set of lanyards, because this lanyard here goes up. Oops. It goes over the other side, and we got the same lanyard as up there going through. going through there and then it goes back down over there and we got tan lacing on that side so we got to spin this around and do it all over again over there but I think that's the final look I'm looking for to match our drawing or pictures here You can see even they got some ropes in the back crossing. It's really hard to get them to look uniform. They're not all the same. That first one on the left looked like it's got extra ropes. The second one looks like just right. The third one's got ropes crossing over. So it's a little tough to get them all looking good. But we'll do our best to make them look like these. Okay, <clears throat> so I was able to, on this second one, 
pre-cinch it over there on the workbench with the vise and the holding jaw. We were able to run that big line and then do the little line cinching all over here where it's easy to pass the cinching around and around. The fossil says hello. Anyway, the trick here was, you know, doing one side over there on the bench and then bringing it over here and putting it into our jig and run the rope up through and uh, put the other dead eye in the other jig and tie that noose knot at the right height so that the jig is holding the height gauge the same for all the dead eyes and then take the dead eye out of the jig after that first big noose knot, noose knot was on the lanyard and it was tight take the dead eye out of the jig pull that rope back up through and undo the dead eye over on this side from the jig and then take that rope with dead eyes on both ends but this end's not cinched back over to the bench and cinch the other side because you got two cinches that we do on here and after the second set of cinching was done over on the bench and we brought it back over here and just fed one of the dead eyes up and through stuck it back on the jig and now <clears throat> we've got the same length without having to cinch it over here on the ship it's just a matter of getting that <clears throat> lanyard tied with that noose knot that we're practicing to learn how to do it without having to look at the paper but so far I'm still looking at the paper so now we know this is good for distance and tension we can take one of these jigs off and start lacing just like we did the first one once we get this side laced up that lacing takes the place of the jig We'll move around to the other side and lace it up and then we start the next dead eye. So because we're able to put the dead eye in the vise, tie the noose knot on there, stretch it over here and grab it and then do the cinching, then go put it on the ship feed it through the hole we're able to get all that stuff done without trying to fight doing it here on the ship hopefully this won't fill up we only have seven ropes going through up there so I think we'll be okay to get the last dead eye through without the ropes filling up the hole too much and we'll have to try to do that on all of them I may open these holes up a little more. This one's going to be okay. But this one we may have to open up a little bit more. And I just used the Dremel with a regular drill bit. And then after I got done getting the hole opened up, I went in there with this tip, which is like a stone, and sort of able to file that opening so it looks clean on both sides we had to use the Dremel to get that to clean up where we punched that hole in there and of course when I look at the prints I'm saying oh how can I do this the drawing should show me blah 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 Yeah, I think it's the last page here. Let me get over here on the bench. 
Yeah, there's the last page. So you can see the top crow's nest. The lanyards are just going around. There's plenty of room up there because there's not all this stiffener boards. But down here on this first crow's nest, you can't see what they did. So I probably added too many stiffeners in there between the two mast poles. But that's okay. We just cleared them out. So that's where we're at. This process I think is going to work. Be repeatable. We just got to, after we do the first side and get it up and strung through, we got to make sure that cinch knot is done at the right spot in the length of that lanyard rope so that these will all be the same across here. And that's the goal, the reason we're doing all this is to make them all the same as they cross next to each other so I think that will work we just got to now continue the tedious task of one at a time very carefully between the lacing and the cinching and the noose knot We'll get this done. Not this week. Sometime in the future. Thanks for watching.